Cities matter, they matter greatly. They're really where the sustainability pinch points sit. African cities are growing hugely. By 2050, over 1.3 billion Africans will live in cities on this continent, more than 50% of the whole population here. And the pressure points are huge. We've got to find some solutions. We've got to figure out how to deliver energy, water, food to all those people. And if we don't, we're going to be in a real mess. Prosperous, low-carbon African cities is obviously not just a good idea. It's a humanitarian uh, prerogative. And in fact, in terms of climate change, it's, it's globally significant and, and necessary if we're all going to survive. The question is how to achieve that. What we try and do in the report, Better Growth, Better Climate, is tee up the scale of innovation, financial, political, institutional, required to arrive at a better outcome for African cities. An outcome that is necessary if we're going to provide uh, reasonable livelihoods for the 23 million people that arrive in African cities every year and will continue arriving in African cities every year for the next three decades. This is a massive urbanization trend. And the way in which we do that in the report is by saying the focus has to be on providing those citizens with services. Africa is a, it's a big place with different cultures, with different languages, um, and with people with different backgrounds. So what I've seen is, from my experience from designing some of this or regenerating some of these new cities, is the ability to listen to, to, to the people and understanding what they need and being able to provide the solutions that are particular to their culture or particular to their needs. They must look for all the, the, the needs of the people that they need and then they must pile it together. I wish they can do that and then they can assist us more so that we can be more empowered. If we're talking about uh, what would constitute a smart city in an African context, I think there are a combination of two or three things that would be essential. I think the first thing is that you do need big, visionary, innovative interventions that start to mean that things are done in a different way. But I think the second thing, and maybe the more important thing, is, is that we've got to get the basics right. Um, and for me, good, uh, sustainable development is really about getting the detail and the governance systems correct and in place so that people have the services, the level of services um, that they require in order to be able to live uh, healthy and quality lives. And I think that the one without the other is not really going to transform city space in a way that is either low carbon or sustainable or inclusive. One of the key things is we need to start looking ahead at what African cities are going to look like in 50 years and start using that as an idea to work towards. We're going to need to start looking at innovative ways of infrastructure networks and, and looking at the way that we provide services, not just the fact that they are provided, but the way in which they're provided that moves us towards a low carbon trajectory. Africa can, in terms of global equity, increase its emissions to some extent. I think the question is rather how can it develop and achieve the gains in standard of living in a way that is much more resource efficient than has been the case in the developed countries. Africa is urbanizing at a high rate and the concept of uh, smart cities uh, will enable us to tackle the challenges that are faced in the urbanization process uh, in Africa. Good solutions do require some level of governance. I think that part of smart cities for me is building the institutional infrastructure, um, be it the capacity of the citizenry or be it the institutional capacity of government at whatever level it is, as well as the partnerships with the private sector. Those institutional arrangements, I think, are absolutely critical um, for success. And without them, I think that we're going to have a random set of initiatives that probably won't last very long or go very far. So you'll have great stuff being done in very little pockets, but you're not actually going to have any system change. 
plans becomes just plans if there's if there's no strong leadership, no strong policies. Most importantly, a plan is a plan if there's no money. So there needs to be financing to be able to fund some of those projects. It's got to do with how we deliver a sweet spot between government and the private sector, such that there's an alignment in terms of how we want to see our cities achieve that um, goal. Outside of that, at current, I think, we are somewhat operating in two different spheres and therefore if we can bridge this gap then I think uh, we'll be delivering that goal on smart African cities. So climate finance is a new area and it's an opportunity to um, access a whole bunch of new sources of finance at the international level and bring them to urban centres in Africa to uh, reduce risk and to blend capital. By that I mean bring private sector into the picture, blend it with public finance so you get a package that delivers transformational projects that, to use the language of the Green Climate Fund, is paradigm shifting. Here we've got to decide when we spend trillions of dollars over the next 20 years in Africa in cities, where does that money go? What does it build? Does it build dirty infrastructure or does it be, build clean, green infrastructure? In the final analysis, cities are ecosystems. What is produced as waste is redeemable as energy, with the correct level of investment, with the correct level of attention and enabling by government, for example. Smart doesn't equal tech. Smart equals optimized use of resources, combining best available data with best available technology within the boundaries of available resources. And if one looks carefully enough in the right places, one finds examples which point investors, politicians, decision makers in the most hopeful direction, which is to somehow find ways, and let's be honest with ourselves, we don't know how to do this yet, but to find ways of harnessing what is happening already and to stitch it together with the, f the formal government efforts where they exist, with the international uh, investment in mega projects, to create livable cities that meet critical human needs and allow people to prosper and to flourish. We have an opportunity to bring together all these agendas so that the financing that cuts across development, climate and um, infrastructure join together. That's a huge opportunity. We can't miss it. If we miss it, we're in real trouble. <laughs>